Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Today, we are taking a Twitter request from Safia Van on Twitter, who asked about Fresnillo. And this is a difficult request because Fresnillo is a tricky name to pronounce, and uh, this video would and may have already lost all credibility if I don't say the name right. It's a mining company listed on the London Stock Exchange, but it has operations in Mexico. So is it Fresnilla, US accent, Fresnillo, um, my, my take at the Mexican accent. I'm not even going to try a British accent. Um, so you know what? I've decided we're just going to go with Frezzy from here on out. So today we're going to do a quick review of Frezzy. It's a silver and gold producer with operations in Mexico. Uh, they, they do pay a dividend. The dividend's not a fixed dollar amount, but it's, it's targeted at 30 to 50% of net profits annually. Uh, so the dividend amount will fluctuate year to year depending on, on profits. Frezzy is currently profitable, but is trading at a five-year low. So this video is going to provide some quick thoughts on Frezzy as an investment opportunity. Let's jump into it. So we'll start in the annual report, the 2018 annual report on page four, which provides an overview of their mining operations. So as you can see here, all of their operations are in Mexico. They've got operating mines uh, that are the red dots here in various regions across Mexico. They've got seven operating mines currently. If you scroll down, on the next page, it, it talks about each of, of the mines you can see it's a combination of silver and gold primary mines and underground and open pit. They also talk a little bit below here about uh, development projects or growth projects, new mines that they're looking to bring on. Uh, Wani CPO is one of their bigger ones that, that they're expecting over the next few years. But one point to note uh, as an investor, if you look at the expected delivery of growth at the bottom of this page, and this is going to be pretty small on your screen, um, but the red indicates when these projects, these growth projects, are expected to come online. And most of these projects aren't actually expected to hit production until about 2021. So we're a few years out from some of their growth projects coming online. I think that's important to note. We'll also talk just quickly on their historical and current production. So in 2018, they produced 130 million ounces of silver equivalent production. And that's pretty much flat over 2017. You can see over the last 10 years, they had grown nicely from 60 million ounces of silver up to that 130 mark. But we are seeing a production uh, plateau company has a resource base of 5 billion ounces of silver equivalent, so it does have uh, lots of property and resource base. The CEO indicated in, in the letter, and we won't scroll all the way through it, um, but he did indicate that production may decrease in 2019 as they, and he calls it, consolidate and prepare for future growth. So I think as an investor, to note right off the top, historically this is a company that's delivered pretty reasonable production growth but 2019 might be a step back um, before they make a step forward, potentially in 2021 and, and beyond. So with that, let's dive into a few key dis discussion points. <clears throat> so we're going to jump over to their first half 2019 results, and they have an investor presentation uh, that goes through their results. And we'll start on page 19, and it talks about... Uh, their revenue by metal and mine. So you can see of their operating mines here, Heradura is the largest in terms of revenue contribution. Saucito is next at 23%. Fresnillo is 15%. Uh, I won't go through all the others, but you can see some pretty nice diversification by mine. And then by uh, metal, you've got gold at 52%, silver at 34%, and then zinc and lead make up the balance. So you can see really how the revenue picture, um, the first half revenue of a little over a billion dollars US. And you can see how that divides up by mine and by metal. <clears throat> I'd also note that in the annual report, they do have a great profile on each mine, as well as a good review of some of the key risk factors 
and uh, key risk factors being metal prices, access to land, security, safety, etc. What I like about what they did in the risk factors is they talked about the, each individual risk, uh, but they talked about the company's appetite for that specific risk. Um, so a really interesting section. I encourage you to jump into the annual report and take a look at that if, if you're interested. The next thing we're going to look at is historical and projected production growth. So if we go to page 35 of the presentation, you can see here, and this is by metal, and this sort of builds on our initial comment that production growth may slow or decrease uh, in 2019 and resume growth potentially in 2021. <clears throat> so you can see here on the silver side, 2018, 60 million ounces, expecting a decrease in 2019, flat, maybe a bit of a decrease in 2020, and then some big growth in 2021. So you've got a couple years where production is decreasing. Same trend for gold, although in 2021 it continues to decrease. So you got declining production, which is never a great thing as an investor. You do have lead and zinc growing slightly, but keep in mind the share of the revenue pie that, that these two materials make up is, is relatively small. So I'd take your cue and your lead from the silver and the gold. <clears throat> now we're going to take a look at the, the financial statements and see how it all ties together. So we'll look at the income statement and we'll jump back to the annual report. And we're going way down to page 164. And this is going to be pretty small on your screen. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit here for you. There we go. So for the year ended 2018, here's your total. A little over $2 billion of revenue. <clears throat> and then you can compare it to 2017. Again, almost revenue is almost flat. So if you go down to the uh, profit for the year, one thing to note here is the net profit of 560 million in 2017 decreased to 350 million in 2018. So you've got profit going down. Um, and if we take a quick look at uh, the first, uh, we won't look actually in the presentation, but I'll tell you um, the first half profits are down from 230 million in 2018, first half to 70 million in the first half of, of 2019. So net profits continue to decrease over the last couple years. And the next thing we wanna look at is CapEx and free cash flow. So we'll go to the, the cash flow statement on page 168. There we go, we'll jump down here. And so while the company is profitable, even though those profits are decreasing, Another extremely important point to note for investors is mining business is heavily capital intensive. There's a lot of CapEx here each year. And you can see in 2018, there was 669 million of CapEx. And in the year prior, there was 605 million. And so the cash flow from operating activities, 588 in 2018 right here, is less than the capex so it's not generating sufficient cash flow to fund the capex and that's not including the dividends so if you were to add in capex of 669 we'll call it 670 and another we'll call it 300 million of dividends you're looking at uh, 970 970 million of capex plus dividends and that is not supported by the 588 million of cash flow from operations. So we will look back into the first half just to see how it's looking year to date. Um, we'll go to slide 36 and you can see here that the CapEx projections um, continue to show a six to seven hundred million dollar CapEx need over the forecast period. So 2019, 20, and 21. So as an investor, if you think about the dividend we know isn't fixed year to year, but if you look at the, the amount of capital that's required and it breaks it up on this slide between what's required for sustaining CapEx, so existing mines, versus new projects that are approved and moving forward, 
and potential new projects for approval. The CapEx spends greater than the operating cash flow, which is a tricky uh, spot for an investor to be in. The last point that I want to make is on the uh, delivery of growth projects. So they do a great job at laying it out. Again, the text might be a little bit small on your screen, but the colors uh, probably tell the story here. And again, it comes back to what we mentioned at the beginning of the, the video. Most of their growth projects, you can see Juan Scipio here being one of the bigger ones, isn't slated to hit production until late 2020, early 21. So most of these growth projects aren't really going to hit until 2021 and beyond. So you're going to have a few years as an investor where production is either going to be flat or down. So in conclusion, you know, key drivers for, for Frezzy are going to be the gold and the silver price. And we didn't really talk about the metal prices themselves, but if you believe in higher gold and silver prices, um, this stock could be interesting. Also, the other thing, key thing we noted is that pr production is plateauing, likely decreasing in 2019. Growth projects aren't expected to really hit before 2021. So while Frezzy is profitable and pays a dividend, I would want to see a return to production growth as well as free cash flow generation to look at it more closely as an investment opportunity. Let me know your thoughts. Do you want some precious metal exposure in your portfolio? We'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.